Hello and welcome back to another episode of True Crime Cases. Today I am going to go a little bit more light-hearted compared to the last episode which was the murder of James Bulger committed by Robert Thompson and John Venables because that was, it was brutal and it was a really horrible one to research so today I decided to tone it down to quite an unusual but funny case because this one I actually find hilarious even researching it more it was just funny so the late Queen Elizabeth II sadly passed away September 2022 her reign was basically full of highs and lows especially in the 80s and the 90s but she did have this very very unusual breach in her security which one man was a can of Carlin and a and no shoes had her at his mercy. Sort of. Was Michael Fagan. He was a painter decorator from Islington, North London. His upbringing was a bit tough to say the least, as his father was an abusive, raging alcoholic. He would abuse his mother and his siblings, as Michael Fagan was one of many siblings. The abuse from his father escalated massively, and that forced Fagan to flee the family home in Clerkenwell, London, at the age of 18. Fagan, in his adulthood, would go on to marry a woman called Christine, who he would have three children with. But due to the childhood trauma, Fagan went down the route of using drugs and alcohol to cope with the trauma. Fagan would go on binges and go missing for days, whether it be on drugs or alcohol, and one of these binges led into one of the decisions he is going to make. This eventful night in 1982, Fagan was on one of his drinking binges around central London. He was holding a can of Carlin and was wearing a white beer-stained sweatshirt. And this walk led him up to the Mall, which leads all the way to Buckingham Palace, as you guessed by the title. You're probably going to guess what he's going to do next. He was spotted by a police officer, which put it down to just a normal drunk man. But Fagan had another idea in his head while in his drunken haze. He decided to climb the fence into the Buckingham Palace Gardens. And with it being 1982 and the palace security being so relaxed, Fagan managed to get over the fence with ease avoiding the thin line of barbed wire. While now at the palace, he decided to walk across the garden and let his imagination just take hold again because he decided to climb up a drain pipe and try to enter the palace, which he sort of tried, sort of did in a way, before he startled a maid. Both obviously in shock and fright of seeing each other. Fagan decided to climb back out while she ran off to get a, a footman or a guard and climb up the drain pipe into a different window. The maid would later go on and boil it down to seeing Fagan as a figment of her imagination. Fagan started to wander the palace, looking at all the furniture and just loitering around. In this time he did trip two alarms but the palace police decided to basically boil it down as faulty and cancel them. But with him drinking heavily and excessively, Fagan needed a pee while looking around the palace. He did notice that a lot of the rooms were named with royal members such as Princess Anne, Princess Diana, Prince Andrew, Prince Charles, and so on. But he was looking for a room which said 
WC toilet on it. Couldn't find one, he had to resort to peeing into something else. So what did Michael Fagan pee into? The Corgi food box. So, yeah, Fagan decided to pee in the Corgi food box and this man is actually incredible. I'm not gonna lie, this man is just insane. Instead of finding, like, a vase with flowers is, he just decided to pee in the dog food. But now with his drink empty and wandering the halls and finally relieved himself, Fagan needed to find more booze. So he went into an eternal room where he would find gifts all laid out. But these gifts were for Charles Diana and some for Prince William, who would be born two weeks later. So Fagan found a bottle of wine, which was corked, a cork bottle of wine. As he couldn't find a corkscrew, this wine is worth thousands and thousands of pounds, just had the cork pushed into it. <laughs> oh my god, this is incredible. And Fagan drank it, but would later make a comment to the Guardian saying, it tasted cheap. Like California. <laughs> Imagine you having your wine criticised by an alcoholic from Islington. But we go on. Fagan then decided just to slip out unnoticed from Buckingham Palace. The way he entered. Which left him pretty much unscathed. In between both break-ins, Fagan had a mental breakdown. He would go on to steal a car and plan to drive to Stonehenge to find his ex-wife. For this offence he was sentenced to three weeks in Brixton prison. Upon his release when family came to pick him up, one of the members of his family did ask him what he was going to do next and Fagan jokingly replied, I am going to see my girlfriend, which is a hint towards the Queen. So, the second break-in took place in June 1982, and it almost happened the same way. He climbed over the fence into the garden and climbed up a drain pipe. But this time, he did not enter through the standard room. He decided to go up to the roof. And while on the roof, <laughs> he lost his shoes and socks somehow. But, um, <laughs> oh my god. He did end up at the Royal Stamp Collection, which is worth millions of pounds of, you guess it, postal stamps. Well, tripping alarm there, the police did put it down to another fault. So, Fagan found himself wandering the halls again, even bumping into some staff members who thought he was just a member of staff. Yeah, a drunk man with no shoes, a member of staff. So, I don't know what the standards are like in the 1980s of Buckingham Palace, but... Come on, like. But, he would find himself going into the office of the master of the house, who was a former vice admiral, and saw a glass ashtray. As it is state that Fagan was going through a lot at this time, he smashed the glass ashtray onto the floor and cut his hand open. So he picked up this shard of glass and decided that he was going to wander around the palace and find the Queen's bedchamber. While searching for the Queen's room, Fagan thought to himself, what's the best way to find it? So he used the paintings as almost a guide. He thought the fancier the paintings were, the closer to the Queen he will be. And he did stumble across the room. He went into this room. The bed was drawn with curtains. But he would describe the room as very ordinary looking. Fair enough. But he thought it would be too ordinary for the Queen. And 
He drew the curtains back, and there she was, sat bolt upright in shock, with a man standing there with no shoes, blood dripping from his hand, holding a glass shiv. The Queen just basically went, What are you doing here? screamed and ran up the room. She would on her way come across her head footman. Paul Wybrew, who at the time was walking the corgis, and basically asked him to confront this man. Both people were in shock of each other. So when Paul Wybrew came into the Queen's bedroom, he saw Fagan there and basically asked him to come with me, I'll get you a drink. So Fagan did, when he decided to calm down from the shock of seeing the Queen, that he went with White Brew and had a whiskey. Yes, give a bottle alcoholic some alcohol. Well done, Royal Family. But <laughs> Fagan did make a very interesting comment about the whiskey by saying, I was shocked. He went into the cupboard and pulled out a famous grouse, hinting that maybe the wine might have been a cheap Californian. But eventually two palace police officers, or Fagan decided to call them old bobbies, came to arrest him. When one of them pulled out a notebook Fagan claimed, the other one looked really relieved that he had it and saying, it's an easy job to retire into. So Fagan was arrested. Even though they could not charge him, was as trespassing as it were considered a crime more of a civil wrong, Fagan would be in charge for theft of the first break-in where he stole the bottle of wine. As he was going through a lot with a mental breakdown, Fagan was not convicted. Actually, his charges were dropped due to his mental state and he was deemed to be put into a psychiatric unit for three months. Fagan's mother made a very interesting comment basically saying he thinks so much of the Queen he just simply wanted to go in to have a chat. Which I do very very believe. But do you think this is the end of Michael Fagan? Of course not, no. Michael Fagan, two years later, was arrested again, but this time in Fishguard, Wales, as he assaulted a police officer in the cafe. But those charges were eventually dropped. But shortly after this, he reunited with his ex-wife, Christine, and his 20-year-old son. So all three were arrested for dealing heroin, which he did see a very hefty prison sentence. But I want to save the best one la for last. A couple of years after the fight in Fishguard with a police officer, some woman spotted him around a London reservoir, naked, with a massive erection. Fagan claimed he was smoking weed and was fishing and he took his trousers off because he had to go into the water because one of them, one of the fishing rods went into there and also made a comment that if that's an erection to a her man <laughs> it's a small package <laughs> oh my god this guy is insane but he did become a slight pop icon because Fagan did jump in a couple of songs, especially God Save the Queen, covered by the Bollock Brothers. Unlike the original Sex Pistols version, Fagan's version was a lot more toned down and more friendly towards the Queen, as well as a heap of newspaper appearances. Fagan actually had an hour-long Channel 4 documentary made for him 
in 2011. This is part of the Antics Roadshow, which was a series that looked at some of the most insane people in life, which go up to insane things, like pretty much a precursor to Absolute Mad Lads by Count Dankula. This documentary was directed by Jamie DeCruz and Banksy. Bill Fagan, though, wasn't the first person to um, actually break into the palace, because... On here, I have got something written down I just discovered. Very, very last minute, actually. As in between 1838 and 1841, it was a 14-year-old boy called Edward Jones. He posed as a chimney sweep and decided to break into the palace to steal Queen Victoria's underwear. He did manage to break out but got chased by the Metropolitan Police and he was arrested. He saw a couple of weeks in prison and then was released. Queen Victoria's daughter, Princess Victoria, was born. He decided to break into the palace again. But this time he was undetected and unnoticed and actually got away. And the, But the third time he broke in and it was a bit much of a... to many people about he was caught hiding under the sofa. So, following this, he was put into prison and after his release, he did not decide to enter the palace again. Which was probably a smart move, to say the least, because he probably got executed for the fourth time. But, where is Michael Fagan now? Michael Fagan is 74 and now is a survivor of COVID. Fagan was interviewed in 2020 when the pubs reopened in a Weatherspoons by The Guardian. So Michael Fagan does seem like a, a Spoons man, I'm not going to lie. But he was asked why he has so much energy for a man his age and the woman who was interviewing him asked was he still on drugs. He said no, but this old dog has still got another run in him, hinting that he would try and break into the palace again as a joke. But with, with the Queen's death, Michael Fagan did pay tribute. He did say he went to his local church on the day of her death to light a candle for his late majesty. And that is now the story of the Buckingham Palace Prowler, Michael Fagan, and the life of his, including a little bit on the dog eat food box. But actually, before I end this video, I did find out something on Listen to Another Podcast. The two years after the break-in as well, Fagan did receive a parcel from the palace, which contained his socks, which was fresh, freshly pressed and laundered, and a clean pair of sandals. Which is shocking they didn't throw him out, but okay. You may as well give it back to him, because he is quite lovable at the same time. But that was the case of the Buckingham Palace Prowler, Michael Fagan. And I thought it would be a nice little tone down from the John Venables and Jamie Bulger case that we covered last time. And the big thing was Michael Fagan, he needed help, and he did finally got it. I know this is... One of the most craziest things that happened in the Queen's reign. But he wasn't going to do no harm. And I do genuinely believe he did think a lot about the royal family. So I do hope Michael Fagan very well in his life. And guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Give it a comment if you want to see any other cases. Um, by the time this is possibly out, I'm probably out filming an exploring video. I put on Twitter already where it's going to be. It's going to be at the Ronda Heritage Park, the old Lewis Mercer Connery. So keep an eye out. That will be coming very soon. And guys, I'll see you next time.